Section 6-4, Solving Polynomial Equations. In this particular section, we're going to look at how to solve polynomial equations by factoring, which means that we're going to start the section by talking a little bit about factoring. Now, when we factor, there is, when we get into higher degree polynomials, there is another special case of factoring, which involves either a sum or a difference of two perfect cubes. And if you recall, a perfect cube is something that actually has, um, is made by multiplying the same thing together three times. So when I think about like making x cubed, for example, x cubed is my, made by taking x times x times x. Or in the case of my problem down here, 125 can be made by multiplying 5 times 5 times 5. So you're going to have to kind of be a little familiar with what makes your perfect cubes and, and what wouldn't be a perfect cube. So we're going to use these formulas. And um, the formulas themselves look a little bit intimidating, but um, it's not as intimidating as it seems. If you'll notice here, um, every, both of these formulas, regardless, they're pretty much identical except for two things. Um, this has a minus and a plus, and this has the opposite, plus and minus. And it depends on whether you're factoring the sum or the difference here. So what I like to do is remember that a sum or difference of two cubes is always going to factor into a binomial times a trinomial. And if you look at the binomial part, the binomial is actually just similar to your, your original problem, but you no longer have the cube sign on the A and the B. So if I can figure out what's being cubed, I can use those things to then set up my binomial and then I'm actually going to use my binomial then to help me do the trinomial, okay? So let's look at this example right here, x cubed minus 125. And I want to figure out what's being cubed to make x cubed. And that's pretty simple, right? It's already got the cube sign on it, so that's just going to be my x. The other part of this, the 125, I have to figure out what number is being cubed to make 125. And in my case, that's going to be a 5. So what I'll have here is um, actually, I'm going to rewrite this so that it is like x cubed. And I'm going to rewrite the 125 as 5 cubed. And the reason I'm going to do that is because that's going to help me set up my binomial. And then my binomial is going to help me set up my trinomial. So my binomial part of my factoring looks exactly like what I have right now without the two cube signs. So my binomial, if I have x cubed minus 5 cubed, by my binomial will simply say x minus 5. Then for my trinomial, I'm actually going to use my um, <clears throat> binomial to help me write out my trinomial. If you look up here in my formula, you'll notice that the this starts with a squared. Well, I already know a because I've written that into my binomial. So if I square this, I'll get my a squared. If I multiply the two things together, a times b, I'll get my middle term. Notice that it has the opposite sign. And then finally, if I square this last term, right, I get the final term of my trinomial. So I'll just use everything in my binomial to help me do my trinomial. So in my case, I start with the x, and I'm going to square that and put that as my first term. So my first term is going to be x squared. For my middle term, I'm going to multiply these two things together and give it the opposite sign. So 5 times x is going to give me 5x. And because this is negative, I'll make mine over here positive. So the middle term is a 5x. And then last, I'm going to multiply or I'm going to square my 5 to make my final term. So that's a positive 25, which makes sense, right? Because the 5 that I have over here times the 25 is going to make a 125 when I'm finished. So I take my binomial and my trinomial, and there's my factoring. And as I've mentioned before, you will not be able to factor this trinomial. We'll have to solve that with a quadratic formula or something like that later on. All right, so let's look at my second example here. I have 27x cubed plus 64. So again, I need to figure out what's being cubed um, to even know if these are perfect cubes in the first place. And 27x cubed is a perfect cube. 27x cubed is 3x being cubed. And 64 is 4 cubed. So again, once I know what they are as cubes, I'm going to use those to make my binomial. So since my first part is 3x, 
and my second part is 4, my binomial comes out to be 3x plus 4. Then I'm going to use that to make my trinomial. So I'm going to square the first term. 3x squared is actually 9x squared. You want to make sure that that's going to make a 27x cubed when you're done. Then for the middle term, right, multiply these two things together, a times b. So 3x times 4 makes a 12x. Give it the opposite sign is going to make that a negative 12x in the middle. And then finally, square your other term, 4, to make your last term. So that'll be plus 16. And there are my sum and difference of two cubes, right? You just follow this pattern, and that's how they're always going to factor. Now, there are some other ways that we can factor polynomials using what we know about factoring a quadratic and a trinomial. And that is um, when you have some polynomials of the fourth degree that have only three terms where you have a fourth, um, a quartic term, a quadratic term, and a constant term. So I'm going to start this out and I'm going to, because it's a trinomial, I'm actually going to factor it just like I would a quadratic trinomial. I'm going to make two um, parentheses, uh, making sure that I don't have any greatest common factor here. And then instead of starting my two parentheses with x and x, because this starts with x to the fourth, I'm actually going to start my two parentheses with x squared and x squared. And then from there, I'm going to factor just like I normally would a quadratic, right? My um, constant term is negative 8, which tells me that I need to have a plus and a minus for signs. And I'm just going to look for factors of 8 that I could use to make a 2 in the middle, which in my case is going to end up being a 4 and a 2. And I'm going to have to make that a minus 4 and a plus 2 so that I get negative 2 in the middle. Once I have it factored like this, because these terms are still quadratic, or these factors, I should say, are still quadratic, I do want to check them to see if they would factor any further. And if you remember back from factoring a quadratic, the only way to factor a quadratic binomial is if it's a difference of two squares. Well, you can see this one right here. 2 is not a perfect square, and it's not a difference. So this one will not factor any further. However, x squared minus 4 those are both perfect squares, and that is a difference or a subtraction in the middle. So if I'm going to keep factoring this until it's completely done, the first factor, x squared plus 2, doesn't factor any further. So it'll stay like this. The second factor, x squared minus 4, will actually factor a little bit further into some linear t factors of x plus 2 and x minus 2. So those would be my factors there. Okay, so I could do the same thing with this one over here, x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus 6. Using my quadratic pattern, I'll factor x squared and x squared, two plus signs this time. And then the factors of 6 that are going to give me 7 in the middle would have to be 1 and 6. Now, if you look at these quadratic binomials, right, I'm looking for a difference of two squares so that I could factor these, and neither one of those are either are even going to be subtraction. So on this particular problem, this would be as far as I could go with my factoring. OK, so now with the factoring out of the way, we're going to use that factoring to solve these polynomial equations. And um, so to do that, like with this one, x cubed plus 8, I need to factor the polynomial. We did this in chapter 5. Um, when we factored um, and solved quadratic equations. So I'm going to get um, this factored, and then I'm going to use those to solve. So if I factor a sum, sorry, of two cubes, I'm going to get x plus 2, and then I'm going to get my trinomial, which is going to be x squared plus 2x, or sorry, let me back that up, x squared minus 2x plus 4. Okay. Now, like I said, the trinomial will not be able to be factored. So what we're going to do to um, solve that is we're going to probably have to do the quadratic formula. So we're going to get x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0. Okay. So this will have to be solved with the quadratic formula. And this over here, though, I can solve, right? I subtract 2 from both sides, and I get x equals 
negative 2. So I do have one solution of x equals negative 2. And the other um, part of this I'm going to solve with the quadratic formula. So I would set that up and solve with my quadratic formula, which I'm not going to do that um, on here for you. Um, but I will go ahead and give you, let's see, if I have x squared um, I am going to get some imaginary solutions for this. So um, if I use my quadratic formula, I get two imaginary solutions, and I get x equals 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. Okay, so I have two imaginary solutions and one real solution. And we'll take a closer look at that in class and go back over the quadratic formula again. But for now, I just want you to see how you set each of those equal to zero. Okay, so one last example here. I have x to the fourth minus x squared equals 12. And I need to first have this equal to zero so that I can solve it by factoring, right, to use my zero product property. So let's minus our 12 and get that over to the other side. And then I'll factor this using a quadratic pattern, right, because it's an x to the fourth. So x squared and x squared. It has a negative 12, so that's a plus and a minus. And then um, let's see, factors of 12 that I could use to get a 1 in the middle, probably going to be a 3 and a 4. Okay, finish up your factoring. x squared plus 3 does not factor any further, but x squared minus 4 does. So I end up with this. And then I set each of my factors equal to 0 and I solve. So x squared plus 3 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. Now, to solve um, this one right here, x squared plus 3 equals 0, I'm going to use square roots. So I'll start by subtracting the 3. Then I'll square root both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. And since that is the square root of negative 3, I make that an imaginary number i square root 3. Now these two, however, are real solutions. Simply subtract 2 and I get negative 2. And I add 2 and I get positive 2. So I have two real solutions, and then I also have two imaginary solutions over here.